How are you gonna hear from outside of space time? You can't even get in. I come before you today, ladies and gentlemen, with a specific agenda to propose. Allow me to present you with the cases for and against ingesting monoatomic gold. According to modern conspiracy theories and historical revisionists galore, the ancient sages became enlightened by imbibing an elixir vitae from a grail ore, eating showbread so-called shimana sprinkled with white powdered platinum minerals, which the ancient Egyptians called mufkuts, made by superheating certain stones, rendering them superconductors by rearranging their atomic electron orbitals causing them to maintain fixed spin, velocity, and direction whenever any sum of electrical charge on them is imposed. In other words, they yield zero resistance against increasingly amped up bolts, and the higher amperes you apply to them, the faster their electron spinning goes. When a powerful enough electrical current is passed through this luminescent dust, though, it disappears entirely, leaving zero residue behind it in a flash of light tinged with a whitish afterglow. Some theorists speculate it vanishes into hyperspace, emanating Serenkov radiative tachyons, but no one really knows. According to modern theorists as well, it's possible that the reason this element was ingested was just so, that it could bond to the telomere tips at the ends of our deoxyribonucleic genomes, simultaneously preserving them from aging and decay and serving to provide the potential for electrification connecting these twin ends causing a triple helix shape to form, allowing a person according to speculation to vanish into an eternal realm, beyond the dimensions of space and time, permeating far past the parameters of the so-called norm. Of course, the lack of material evidence to support all this is taken by adherence to this premise as proof for it, but in reality there is only legend and modern interpretations thereof to support the premise of any possible health benefits to be derived from ingesting metals from the platinum group in their monoatomic forms. On the other hand, when administered in a cautious regimen, microdoses of wormy solutions seem to at least be harmless and not an instantly fatal poison, as supposedly Anki once taught, Adapa, although only in deception. So I posited only as speculation Ormies may be ingested without causing immediate death, but neither will this method bring about immortality in Nirvana. So the situation is much like with other naturally botanical entheogens, in that outside of myths there's little description of their usage in antiquity, even though within those myths they are partaken of with ease and avidly. This so-called food of the gods included marijuana mixed with poppies and a tea, psilocybin and muscari tinctures administered generously, extracted or mold for LSD as well as ayahuasca, henbane, and certain other seeds for arousing one's endogenous receptors to secrete DMT. Tribal shamans have been hunting magic mushrooms for around 20,000 years, when mankind first attained behavioral modernity. By now, the alien gods we can talk to on these psychedelic drugs have already watched us build up many empires that have since crumbled into dust. Can we trust the teachings of a seemingly alien species, who may or may not, after all, only be our future selves time-traveling, back to warn their past selves us about our impending self-fulfilling doom? And if they are, then what does this mean for those of us in this room? I have to ponder, and yet, I have no answers yet, and so I must occlude.